Hello everyone. Welcome to the another episode of Retina Roundup. I am Dr. Ramya, fellow in BR and Ocular Oncology, and I am bringing you this month top five articles. Moving on to our first article of this month, it is about the intravitreal anti-VEGF and thromboembolic events. It remains under a huge debate, isn't it? Let's see whether this article can give some insight to that. The study compared the risk of thromboembolic events between the patients receiving aflibercept or ranibizumab. The results are neovascular AMD patients, the aflibercept had a lower risk compared to the ranibizumab group. However, the DME patients receiving aflibercept had no difference in the risk of thromboembolic events compared with ranibizumab. And most interestingly, among patients treated with ranibizumab, the DMB group had a higher risk of thromboembolic events than the neovascular AMD group. The similar results were obtained with aflibercept. Yes, this study proves that the patients treated with anti for different indication is associated with a varying risk of thromboembolic events. And the findings provide evidence to support treatment selection and thromboembolic event risk into the consideration. Moving on to a second article of this month. It's quite interesting. Subtain on tricot injection in preventing the proloxysimab associated intraocular inflammation. And the patients were divided into two groups, proloxysimab alone and proloxysimab combined with subtain on tricot injection. 14 eyes received the proloxysimab alone and 30 eyes received the combination therapy. 28.6% of the eyes developed inflammation in proloxysimab group and inflammation did not develop in 30 eyes that received combination therapy. The difference is statistically significant. In combination therapy, the main concern arose in all our minds will be IOP rise and the cataract. But surprisingly, the IOP rise noted in 3 out of 30 eyes and it returned to normal range within 2 months without any medication and no cataracts developed during this mean follow-up period. And yes, from this we can conclude that subtain on tricot injection can be a good option in preventing proloxysimab associated intraocular inflammation. Moving on to a third article of this month. To assess the long-term safety and efficacy of epimacular brachytherapy for chronic active neovascular AMD, the participants were randomized to either PPV with 24 gray AMD and PR and ranibizumab or PR and ranibizumab monotherapy. And they found that number of injection in AMB group versus in the ranibizumab group, there is no significant difference at all. Over 36 months, the BCBA changed. In fact, it was worser in the AMB group than in the ranibizumab group. However, the study concludes that the brachytherapy was intended to decrease the number of injection, but it does not seem to do that, but ended up in a worse BCBA than anti of monotherapy. Moving on to our fourth article of this month. It's a very interesting article. The fine particulate matter measured by the satellites can predict the risk of AMD. How is it possible? Let's look into this. The ambient particulate matter is nothing but the environmental pollutant and exposure to it possesses a various systemic issues and the size of the particle PM2.5, it possesses the greatest health risk and has a detrimental effect on the ocular surface as well. The 42 lab participants in the Taiwan were evaluated to link between the fine PM, especially the 2.5 and the development of AMD. The PM2.5 was continuously measured by the satellites and it was assigned to each geographic district. And the PM2.5 concentration were highest in the spring season, followed by those in winter, autumn, and then summer. And the AMD risk increased by 19% for a 10 microgram per millimeter cube PM2.5 increase. The Taiwanese PM2.5 levels are higher than the WHO recommended air quality. So it possesses a 1.4 fold risk, which significantly increases the concern about their visual health and the social burden. Moving on to a final article of this month, the vitrectomy for diabetic complication. It's an RCT trial to report the updated clinical outcome in subjects undergoing PPB for PDR-related complications. 943 subjects who prospectively underwent small cage PPV with anti of pretreatment for PDR-related complications and completed six-month follow-up were studied. Then the results are 19.5% achieved 20 by 50 or a better acuity and 69.1% achieved 20 by 200 or a better acuity at six months. 
The most common post of complication was BH in 62.3%, and unplanned secondary PPV was necessary in 9.1% of the cases. The study reports the updated clinical outcome in patients undergoing PPV for PDR related complication and which compares favorably to the age prior to the small gauge PPV and anti VEGF pretreatment. That's all for this month. We'll meet you all again next month with five new interesting articles. Bye bye.